everybody, welcome back to Bentley House. Today I'm going to be making a baking scene, and this is in collaboration with Kate Cavanaugh. If you've been a part of my channel very long, you know that I love to write stories that go along with my miniatures. In the process of learning a few tips and tricks on how to write, I ended up finding Kate's channel. On her channel, she talks about her writing journey and does a lot of different writing experiments. So I reached out to her and I asked her if she would like to try a writing experiment where there's a miniature scene involved and she was on board. So what we did is I had a general idea of what I wanted to make based off some miniatures I already had and then Kate came up with an outline and we worked together to come up with a scene and a story. This was such a fun process as it used two different art forms and I'm so excited to show it to you. So let's get started. The original main idea that I sent to Kate was a baking competition with three ovens. The reason I had that idea is because I had three ovens to work with. From there, Kate came up with a story and sent me an initial outline. Based off this outline, I went through with a highlighter and started figuring out all the things I would need to make to have Kate's story come to life in my miniature scene. Now that I had my list, I could start making the items. Here are the three stoves that I had. Now if you don't know, I have a store where I make kits and sell them, and these were a product of me trying to get a kit to work, and I ended up having to rebuild this several times, which means I ended up with three stoves that really weren't going to be used, and I got a comment on my Facebook page saying, hey, wouldn't it be cool if you use these in a scene, and thus, here we are. So what I'm doing now is I'm kind of coming up with the idea for the stage. It's a baking competition, so we definitely are going to need a stage. And even though I am working in miniature, I didn't want this to be too big, especially since I needed three different cooking stations. I wanted to keep everything pretty compact. Before I could do anything else, I really needed to fix up my stove kits that were all in various stages of unfinishedness. I decided to have some of them with the doors open, some of them with the doors closed. This is partially to do with the fact that some of the doors can't open and some of the doors have a hard time closing. It just depends on which part of the kit making process I was in when that particular stove was made. To finish it up, I'm adding some handles, some stove top burners, and give everything a nice metallic shine. Moving on to the stage, I am using a material I don't normally use, but I had some of it in the garage. It's this insulation board. Um, I'm not quite sure if I suggest using it or not. It made quite a mess and it could be sensitive to skin, but it does make a pretty flat surface that you can build up pretty quickly. I used two layers of this insulation board and because it was kind of dented and a little bit um, creased in some places, I added a layer of matte board on top to make sure everything was nice and flat for when I started to create these stage floor textures. Once that was all finished, I made sure to put something heavy on top so it could all dry flat and I knew that I had a solid stage. I needed to cover the exterior of the foam board just because it doesn't look very nice. So I used my mat board and a ruler to cut out some strips that will go along the sides. My vision for this stage ended up being one that you would maybe see set up at like a fair where people could gather around. And so typically these are pretty small builds and they end up having a lot of paneling that can easily cover the structure of the stage. So I cut out strips of the top layer of mat board to make it look like paneling that's going all the way around the outside of the stage. Then I used a pencil to mark out lines where I want the wood paneling for the flooring, I guess wood flooring, to be along the stage top. Then I cut out bits of chipboard using my straight cutter, and then I just glued them on, making sure that I didn't line up all the edges. I wanted it to look like a wood floor where they're connected at different bits, and glued them all individually until I had a wood floor. Now my stage is looking pretty complete, except for, of course, paint. 
I decided to go with some pretty light colors. I know this is different for me. If you're used to my channel, I go for darker colors, but I really thought for a baking competition and especially one that might be on television or at a fair, they're going to use some pretty bright colors. So I wanted to keep that in mind. To make the backdrop for the competition, I'm using some of the same board. I only cut through one layer of the board so that when it folds, it creates this backdrop, which will fit against the back of the stage. Because the face of the insulation board is still pretty dimpled and wrinkled, I decided to glue the wallpaper for the backdrop onto some chipboard before I glued it onto the backdrop itself. I'm using Mod Podge and trying to spread it pretty evenly. And then I am going to take my paper that I printed for the backdrop and glue it on. This is some wallpaper that I made in a previous video. I will link that down below as well if you want to check it out. It has individual little baked goods that I painted and then put into a graphic design for the wallpaper for this competition actually, but I didn't tell y'all that when that was happening. <laughs> Now that I have everything glued down to the chipboard, I'm going to glue the chipboard to the backdrop that I created out of the insulation board. So I'm just doing the same thing with Mod Podge. I'm going to be gluing one section at a time, starting with the center section so that I know that that is lined up as best as it can be. I'm using my one, two, three blocks to hold it down. And once it's dry, this is how it's looking. We have a pretty exciting, colorful backdrop for our three stoves. I ended up naming the competition without really asking Kate. I did ask her approval once I had named it. I told her I could reprint the poster, but I decided to call it the Elbow Brush Bake Off because they're such close quarters. And if you know the phrase like brushing elbows, that's where it came from. I need to create a structure on the top so that I can hang the competition banner. Um, again, I'm thinking kind of like a small stage at a fair, and so they would typically have the name or some kind of uh, poster above where the excitement is happening. So that's what I wanted to create here, and I made sure that the poster matched all of the wallpaper and some other details that are soon to come. Now I needed to create the work surface. So I took my pattern, which was just a piece of paper for the floor, put it back onto the floor so I could draw directly on it to create my pattern for the table, which will eventually be the work surface. I decided to make it all one table because it would be very difficult and there wouldn't be that much space between tables anyway. So this is gonna be one table that goes with the shape of the entire stage and it's gonna have two sinks that are in between each station. I also wanted to make a smaller table that will be towards the front of the stage, which is where the final baked goods will be displayed for judging. So now that I have my table all patterned out, I'm gonna cut it directly out of the paper that I drew it on. I'm folding it in half just to make sure that everything is mirrored and looking like it, you know, is professional, I guess. <laughs> And then I'm going to take the piece and I'm going to cut it into individual sections. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to insert the sinks into these corners and I think it's going to be a little easier for me to cut into the wood if the wood sections are separate. So they will be glued back together, but um, this just is what made sense in my head. I'm using these takeout butter containers for the sinks. These are great to save and clean out and use for anything that's like this because they have these great curvature and they just already look like a sink. I trace the base of the sink onto the wood and then carefully cut it out with my craft knife. I'm using balsa wood here, so I have to be super careful that I don't tear the wood as balsa is just a really, really soft wood. After everything's cut out and I know my sinks are going to fit, I'm using some very small matchsticks and I'm going to use these to connect my tabletop back together. Once that's dry, I have a complete tabletop and I can start building the structure that goes underneath. 
The first thing I like to do whenever I'm working on a table is make a lip that goes all the way around the underneath. This makes it really easy to glue on, especially square table legs. They glue really nice into the corners and then you know you have them in the right spot. And then you just need to kind of look at them from all directions and make sure that they are as vertical as possible. I went back with some other craft wood, added some supports, and then I had a completed workbench for our miniature baking competition. Now the next step of course is to paint it and I wanted to do something bright and cheery because this workbench is the center of the entire competition. I went off some of the colors that were in the wallpaper and came up with this kind of salmon-y pink. And then I painted the sinks a silver color so that they stood out as well and looked a little bit more metallic. To add some more realism to this, I needed to add pipes that were running from the underside of the sink down into the stage. And my favorite way to make pipes in miniature is to use Q-tips. I cut the heads off of either end and then I use little strips of cardstock to wrap along the ends and this makes it look like pipe connectors. Here you can see if I put it right up underneath the sink, it looks like it's being connected to the underside of the sink. And once you paint them with silver paint, you really can't tell that they are just Q-tips with a bit of paper. I did the same exact thing for the faucet heads that are going on the top part of the table. You just take a Q-tip strip, put it in water for about 20 seconds, and then you can bend it into a rounded shape. I let that dry, and then I had some faucets that look just like this. And then I think I used like a little bead for the water handle. Here's the really quick little display table I made for the finished baked goods. I made it the same way I made the stage, but then I put a wooden tabletop on it, so it looked similar to the work table that I just created that I painted in pink. However, this one I painted in beige, which was another color that was found in the wallpaper that I put on the backdrop. Now that the major pieces are built, it's time to create some details. And to do that, I'm gonna start with a little 3D design. Baking competitions tend to come with a lot of pots and pans and bowls and just things that they need to cook with. So instead of making a ton of them myself by hand, I decided to 3D print them. So I went into Tinkercad, which is a free online program, and worked with some shapes until I got some that I really liked, and then I could just print as many as I needed so that I had complete sets for each team. Now in the outline, Kate had one team that was specifically focused on their bakeware, so I wanted to make sure that each set was a little bit different, and I did this by using paint. I started out by hand painting each piece, but then I quickly realized that if I was going to get through this quickly, spray paint was going to be the way to go. I sprayed this set with a textured spray paint and I really like how that looked. And then I also went back and sprayed the other two with some different colors so it looked like each set was from a different team, like they had to bring their own pots and pans. So now that I have some bakeware, I need to work on what they're actually baking. In the outline, it very specifically mentioned cakes and it also very specifically mentions what each team is focused on and I knew that this was going to be my chance to pull in the team's personality into my miniature scene. So we have a travel team, a bakeware team, and a healthy team. And so for the travel team I came up with some suitcases with a globe on top. The bakeware team is a pile of pots and pans with a hat on top and the healthy team was kind of a, a log with some leaves and then maybe a squirrel. That was my sister's suggestion and so I was gonna see if the squirrel would work and I don't know where the squirrel came from but we're just gonna go for it. I knew that in the end all these cakes needed to fit on this display stand so that's why I have the display stand out and ready to make sure that I'm getting my scale correct. 
I'm using some polymer clay for this. I don't work in polymer clay all that often, but I do think polymer clay is very reflective of fondant. I think it looks very similar, although, you know, disclaimer, don't eat polymer clay. It's not good for you. Um, but I ended up just kind of playing with the shapes and not worrying too much about realism. And I think that was really freeing for me because I do struggle with that in polymer clay. I don't really know how to make things look super real, but because this is supposed to be a cake and made from fondant, I didn't really feel like I had to be super detailed and get all the textures right. The two suitcases were basically brown rectangles, which I put a snake of clay around to look like the edge of the suitcase. And then I inserted a craft stick in the middle so that I could put the globe on top and not worry about it kind of rolling off the top of the cake. Moving on to the next cake, I will go back to that eventually, so don't worry. I'm not done with that yet, but I have to get all the basics of the polymer clay done. Moving on to the next cake, it is the bakeware team, and I decided to do a marbled polymer clay effect because they're really focused on their bakeware. I wanted, I figured that they, you know, they would, they would do something special for the body of the bakeware that they're showing in their cake. Does that make sense? I don't know. So this first one is a pot, and I was really having fun putting these handles on. They're really similar to the handles I put on the suitcases as well. Um, I really enjoy just putting those details on and not worrying about the realism because it's a cake. Cakes are fun. It's okay for them to not look hyper realistic. So yeah. Then I went to the chef's hat that is supposed to go on top of the pots and it was really interesting to try and get a shape that looks like a chef's hat. It's not the easiest shape in the world so that it actually looks like a hat, like it looked like a mushroom and it looked like all sorts of different things. But I think eventually we got kind of a hat shape, so you'll have to let me know if it works <laughs> as far as a chef hat goes. Again, I will come back to this one. It is not completely done yet, but we do have a stack of pots with a little chef's hat. Oh, and I did go back and add a craft stick to this one, and I know this will just keep everything together, especially when it's baking in the oven. This last cake had to be something special. Uh, spoiler alert if you haven't read the story yet, this cake needs to win. So I wanted to do something extra special with it. And also this is going to be the healthy one, which um, is going to have like a little tree stump. So I did the marbling effect again with the brown to create the tree stump effect. And then I pulled apart the top of it so it looked like it had some limbs coming off and there would be roots room to add the squirrel, <laughs> the random little squirrel guy. I added a little bit more of the brown to the bottom so that it looked like there were roots. I did find that I had a cutter in my clay supplies that was a leaf shape, so this made the leaf part of this process a lot faster. I just used the cookie cutter to cut them out and then started spreading them around as if they were going up the exterior of the stump. Then I decided I wanted them to go over the stump, very similar to my drawing. So I got a couple little Christmas hooks out from my supplies. I twisted them together to make them extra strong and then stuck them inside the stump so that it was kind of arching over the top. Then I used my clay leaves to go on either side of the wire so that they touched each other and the clay actually kind of covered the wire, although you can still see the wire, which worked out for it being green because it works out as a vine. So I think that came together pretty well and pretty easily. So here's the little squirrel. I didn't know if he would work, but I think he turned out pretty cute and I do end up putting him on top of the cake. I'm using some liquid polymer clay to attach him because it's gonna be difficult to get a, a stick in there and that's kind of awkward. So I just used some liquid clay to stick him on top of the stump and underneath the leaves. So those are my three finished cakes, but before they go into the oven, I want to make a really quick little cake platter. I'm not sure what they're called, but they're usually uh, about the size of the cake and they're covered in foil. And I thought this would add, again, a little bit of realism because typically you don't just see a cake 
sitting on its own. It usually is sitting on something that it was baked on, you know, once you know, so they can decorate it and they don't have to like lift it up with their hands. So I wanted to make sure and create those. Now that those are created, I can work on the icing. I did bake them though. I baked them according to package instructions. This is an Arteza brand outdoor paint and I found that it works a lot like puffy paint. So I'm taking these little baggies that I've saved from various things. I'm gonna squeeze the paint inside, close it off and use it like a miniature icing bag. Because this works like puff paint, it's going to keep its shape once it dries. I'm gonna go around and anywhere I think that the cake decorator might have put icing to cover up little creases or cracks or just make a decorative line of icing, I'm going to add paint in those areas. I'm doing the same thing on the other cakes, which includes adding a little bit of grass to the bottom of my nature cake. I think this was actually the most fun one to do icing on because it could really just kind of go where, actually this one was the most fun because I made this blue and purple goop coming out of the bakeware. And so this could kind of go over the edge of the pots and pans and drip down. So this one was really fun as well. So I think it added a lot to these cakes, making it really look like there is icing and I didn't have to do it with polymer clay. <laughs> I'm actually not even sure how I would do that with polymer clay anyway. But here's what I have so far. I have a lot of the major pieces done and I'm really liking the bright colors. I know mostly I do things dark. Oh, and I did create these team signs. So each team is assigned a different little graphic of a different baked good. So that will come into play later as well. I mentioned earlier that Kate sent me an outline. On this outline, oh goodness, okay. Can't, I can't, can't talk without Stormy. She's star of the show. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that Kate sent me an outline. In her outline, she mentioned a distraction, but she didn't say what the distraction was. So I asked her if she was okay with me coming up with something in my miniature scene that could constitute as a distraction. If there's anything that my years of watching and playing horror video games has taught me, always go for the electrical. Should have just put you in there. I figured each and every stage, no matter where it is, is going to need some kind of electrical panel. So I cut a few pieces out of mat board and started to build a basic electrical panel box with a very simple lid. I ended up using the same ornament hooks I used earlier. I just bent them into different shapes to make them look like wires that were coming out of the electrical box at all different weird angles. Then I just painted the whole thing. I painted the electrical box a silver color and then painted everything inside of it black as if there had been some kind of mishap because usually when things go on fire or get burnt, it ends up with uh, like a charred look on the interior. I also painted some of the Christmas ornament hooks a red color uh, so that it looked like there were different wires on the inside. Using a wire bending tool, I just bent up the door a little bit so it looked as if it had been forcefully opened by a powerful, power, powerful, powerful blast. I'm not going to create hinges or anything because I'm just going to glue it next to it once it's glued onto the wall. Super simple. Now it's time to do my absolute favorite thing in miniature, which is mess everything up. I'm locating the electrical box on the wall between two very specific stations, which if you read the story, you'll kind of get why. And I'm just going to glue it straight onto the wall. This is where I have to get over my glue fear of gluing things down and just go for it. I'm using my shaved chalk pastel. This is just sticks of chalk pastel that I have shaved down and put into these little containers. And I'm going to use a brush to try and create what looks like an electrical blast against the wallpaper on the back. If you're new to miniatures and you haven't tried anything like this before, it can be really scary to start messing up something that you've worked so hard to make look nice. But I will tell you, it is super fun just making a gigantic mess. And using chalk pastel is a mess. 
To create another mess, I decided to use glue, sand, and this kind of peach color to create what is going to look like cake batter. I'm putting it into this little part. It's like a, it was like in the party uh, area. I don't know what they're for at a party. It's not a party I usually go to, but they're these little syringes. And I just added my mixture in there and started dripping it inside of the electrical box, which could be probably the cause of all the trouble with the electrical box. From there, I made it look like it was spewing out from the underside and going all over the stage. Of course, if it's going all over the stage, it's also going to be going all over the miniatures that are near that area. It was at this point I realized I needed to glue my stoves in place because there were going to be drips and stuff happening and they kind of needed to just stay where they were at. There was cake batter everywhere going down the side of the stove, on the floor, on the wall. It was just a mess, which means it was super fun. Now that my work on the back wall was done, I knew I could permanently glue the workspace in place. I didn't want to glue this in until I knew I wasn't going to be working back in those really tight quarters. Because there was going to be some chaos going on in the story, I knew I needed a couple stations to have a pretty full messy workstation. To fill everything up, I looked up miniature printables online and found all sorts of little supplies. I also wanted to make some symbols and some aprons that matched with the graphics that were to denote each section or each station of the competition. So there's an ice cream station, a pie station, and a cake station. In the story, there is a moment where a couple of the teams get switched, so I decided aprons would be a good way to show this physically in my miniature. So if you look closely, you will be able to notice that a couple of the aprons don't end up at the right station at the end of the competition. To make these, I just used printable fabric, printed on what I needed, and then added a little bit of embroidery thread to make the loop for the top of the apron. Now I'm just going to be adding in all these miniatures that I've created and fill up the scene. In the story, there is a very special type of sugar, so I wanted to make sure and create that. I am using a silica gel packet, and I'm using the little balls that come on the inside to mostly fill up this sugar bowl. I did realize that it doesn't look very realistic. The silica gel beads are a little bit too big, so instead of doing that, I just left them in there, but on top of that, I actually put in some salt. I don't want to use actual sugar because that will attract bugs, but salt should be okay. I'm also going to use again some of that outdoor paint that's kind of like puffy paint. I'm using it in a little bag. These are the same bags I used on the cakes. And I'm just going to add icing all over. There are two stations that end up being quite a mess. And so I am adding icing to everything they probably touched, including the sinks and the bowls. I'm also adding in some extra cake batting. Batting? Batting? Cake. Cake. Batter. There we go. <laughs> cake batter. I'm adding cake batter into different areas and I used different color cake batter. So there is the vanilla cake and then chocolate cake and whatever cake ended up in the electrical box. I'm using a tool to kind of make it look as though it's coming out of some of the pans. Here is the finished mess that I created. You will see that one station looks rather cleaned up. The little spoons that are sticking out of the bowls are not actually spoons, they're just toothpicks that I cut off the end and rounded the end, so it looks like they're a bunch of wooden spoons that had been used mixing. But you can't see the spoon end, so I didn't actually have to make them into real spoons. You will see the aprons are kind of draped about in different areas and at the really nice cleaned up station they have the correct aprons at the correct station nicely hanging on the side. 
So now I have completed my entire list, including one giant mess, and the scene is complete. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, make sure you go down to the description box where I will have a link to Kate's video. She's going to be talking about her writing process and working with my miniature scene in creating her story. She'll also have a link to her story so you can read and figure out what was going on in this scene. Quick content warning because I know I have a few families with young kids that watch my channel. The story does have a couple swear words. If you're new to my channel, hi, hello. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe and like. And if you want to see some of my stories that I have created to go with my miniature scenes, I'll leave a couple links down below as well. Kate, thank you so much for collaborating with me today. I had so much fun and I would definitely be up for doing it again. I hope you all have an amazing week and I will see you in the next one. Bye. You literally just gonna make me hold you the whole time, huh? I have stuff to do. It's so heavy. Oh, it's not heavy. <laughs> you say the lines for me, okay? Thank you.